I want to talk here for a moment uh, about something a soldier cannot stand. A veteran, um, a, a soldier just simply cannot stand anyone or someone who lacks honor. And I think that the disdain that we have, as a matter of fact, I know it is after talking to many veterans um, whenever I come across them. In our community, people like Bill Clinton and Donald Trump and a lot of these other politicians that you esteem very highly um, in the civilian world, the civilian populace, uh, you champion them as the people's champion um, and the people who speak for the people. We personally know the hearts of chicken hawks and those who actually despise some of our brothers who have given and paid the ultimate sacrifice and gone on to death honorably. Some got drafted, some volunteered. Whether they were drafted or whether they volunteered, they didn't run when it came time to go to the fight. It's utterly disturbing to me. It's utterly disturbing to veterans all across this world. And especially when you do the research and look at the history of this country right here, this country, United States of America, and their total disdain and dishonor for veterans who the only time they ever see fit for us and they tried to deceive us over and over again by saying thank you for your service to our country. Meaning thank you for putting your ass on the line and putting your ass in the sling so we can all enjoy a little world of utopia and ease over here. While we can continue to keep enjoying our freedoms and our liberties, it's people like you that is willing to go out there and die while we cowards jump across the border, not only do we get one deferment, we get two deferments, three deferments, four deferments, and we use school as a crutch to when the number or your name is called to take off and run. On the flip side, I honor and veterans alike. The memory of someone like Muhammad Ali who could clearly see through the smoke screen, who could clearly see through the lies of these politicians and clearly see all the political theater and atmosphere that they created in this country by putting us, we just happen to be somebody's children as well, and they're still even willing to this day to even put your children in harm's way while their children enjoys a life of ease. They go to school, go to college, paid for because they have all the money. And later on, they run for politics, they run for some office in Congress or some Senate or, or get some particular, particular position on the cabinet. And they act like they're so patriotic and so American and stuff. And, and then people like myself, we're despised. You know, I'm wearing, I'm holding right here. I'm holding right here in my hand one of my old berets. I had a black beret and I have this one right here. This maroon beret, which uh, commonly a lot of people called a red beret. This signifies being a paratrooper in the military. And I cannot tell you from my little stench of being in service, the different conflicts and the wars that we were in. And what disappointed me more than anything was when after I got out of service, to see the lack of gratefulness and the lack of thankfulness. I'm not asking for nobody to give me or no veteran is asking for anyone to give them any special treatment. Only one thing. Remember us. Remember us because many of you out there have fathers when they had the opportunity to go to war, when they had opportunity to join the military. I'm not saying everybody has to join the military. I'm just saying when your fathers had an opportunity 
you remember that these chicken hawks who champion themselves as some type of Caesar, as some type of warlord like Barack Hussein Obama and Bill Clinton um, and Donald Trump. They all champion themselves like they're some some great, great patriotic American and and um, and and that they are some virtuous warrior. When the truth is, every one of them should have a C tattoo across their forehead as cowards, because that's exactly what they are: is a bunch of chicken hawk cowards. And then we have people out there who actually politically speak the truth and tell the American public the truth. You don't even want to hear them. You want somebody that's continue to keep on playing the same old game. And now let me tell you something. I've seen my share of people who act brave behind mics. They act brave behind keyboards. They act brave behind video screens. Oh, there's some brave people out there. And everybody always would have done this and I would have done that. When the time passed for you to even do something. And the majority of those people you can't never find for nothing. Oh, I've seen people who with their mouth, they'll make you think that they're Mike Tyson. They'll make you think that they're Vander Holyfield or Lennox Lewis. Yeah, they will. They'll, they'll actually make you think that they're a, a, a great warrior like an MMA. But in function and truth, you put those same people who run their mouth up in front of a warrior. Somebody who don't run because you say words. Those same people begin to piss in their pants. Those same people begin to come up with all different types of apologies and everything in order to defuse the matter after they have allowed their mouth to override their ass. It's a detestable thing to me to know that Donald Trump got over four deferments when he had a chance to go to Vietnam, but because he's a rich boy, because he had a gold spoon in his mouth, I guess he's privileged and he had his right. Same thing with Bill Clinton, another golden boy. And Barack Hussein Obama is even, I, hey, the jury's still out, according to public opinion, if he's, this man's even a citizen or not. The America that you and I once knew, it's not here anymore. It's been gone. You just don't know it. They bank on your patriotism. They bank on you not knowing what they're doing. They bank on that. They bank on your ignorance in order to keep a dream alive or something that really truly has never been, but it's always been a nightmare in the first place. Remember what I said. I'm not saying that you have got to go to the military and be willing to put your life on the line uh, in order to be some kind of hero. No, all you have to do is just be a real man. Be a real woman. You look at these clowns that we got running office today. All these chicken hawks. And believe me, I have a vocabulary that's pretty extensive. I have other names for them as well. But it's so sad. And then you have a few honorable men uh, in the FBI that guards and protects these clowns, these liars, these gangsters, these treasonous bastards. That, it's amazing what's going on. It's utterly amazing. There's only one thing that's going to get this country right if there's any hope for it at all. Only one. And that's a revolution. There is no such thing as a peaceful revolution. And there is no such thing as a revolution without bloodshed. We've crossed the threshold in this country. We have. We literally have crossed the threshold in this country. Because the Constitution of the United States of America, that's the, that's the whole purpose and sole purpose for us having a Second Amendment is number one, for us to be able to defend ourselves from a government that is literally gone wild, that's out of control, a tyrannical tyranny type government. And that's what we have in every county, every parish, every state, and the United States of America up there in Washington, D.C. We have literally been hijacked by special interests and lobbyists in the establishment, and we don't even know what this country is anymore. And I sit and look at all the people. See, I'm trying to let you know that I am under no illusion 
whatsoever at all. Pastor Dow is not the man that has reared you in lies and fairy tales all your life. I have not lied to you sociably. I have not lied to you economically. I have not lied to you politically. I have not lied to you spiritually or religiously. I have not lied to you in any point whatsoever at all. You may not like what I have to say. You may not like the manner in which I deliver the message. But that's your own feelings and emotions that many of you not accompanied with or not even known of or don't even really truly know. That's something you've got to overcome yourself. Honor is a lost word. It really truly is. And how can you be a man or woman of honor when in no facet of your life you can't even recognize the truth? Because the one thing the truth always does, it always sets free. So our whole country is ran by a bunch of damn chicken hawks, including chicken hawks with skirts. <laughs>